very fitting uh, to start the day with this as a focal point here because in addition to the indices to the new all-time highs, the eco data that I brought up at the top of the show, Phil, uh, with the hurricane, uh, the impact it's having on the Gulf and some of the refiners there, crude oil, a focal point for traders and investors this week. But at current levels, uh, it seems very balanced in between that range, 77 to 62, the levels we saw uh, throughout the month of July and the month of August, basically. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's had a, an impressive recovery for, since that recent sell-off up about seven sessions in a row. We're trapped right now between about $70 and $67 on the downside. You know, I'm hearing that the workers are unable to get back to the refineries, so it may cause some kind of stress as far as the ability to get gasoline, to get oil uh, at the moment here. And we've seen, you know, the drawdown on Cushing. We're down about uh, 18 million barrels year over year. We've got a pretty tight supply outlook right now. I know that living down in, in the Gulf Coast, that every time we see one of these hurricanes approaching, we've seen a mad rush and a mad dash for, for gasoline, people filling those up. And it's not only that, it, there's a lot of other um, things that are out there like cell phone batteries, same thing with ice, the water. These are big big time things that people really uh, you know don't, don't look at and they're really sought after. Another commodity, that I was just reading about that's been impacted. Look at the price of coffee. It broke out to the upside. It's had a severe problem, severe drought down in Brazil. But Folgers is where there's a major shipping hub uh, right in that New Orleans area that may be impacted. You might see coffee prices get another extension up as a result. All right, I've got the chart up here. We can see the nice rally. We've seen the bid that's coming to play off the August lows and uh, well, back up and nearing those July highs, we saw the spike up, the trend environment to the upside, and uh, this will be something to watch. It does establish here a bit of a high and a low to keep an eye on, but I did want to kind of circle back, and I like that you brought coffee into this because we like to keep an eye on the softs as well and uh, some of the other futures products. Going back to the energy markets, though, I, I want to get your thoughts on the supply and demand side because I'm always fascinated by it when these hurricanes hit the Gulf region. Here you can see, though, just quickly, crude, the WTI. And uh, while you were speaking to some of your points there, Phil, we pulled up the intraday look, the hourly chart, the move off the July highs we saw up around 77. And to your point, the recovery we saw off the 61 and change level it was recently. Here's crude on the left, the WTI, the Brent on the right, both holding at or just below the 50-day moving average. But, you know, I always, again, as I mentioned, I'm fascinated because you get the, uh, well, as you mentioned, workers unable to come to the refineries. The refineries get shut shut down through some of the, you know, wave of water and the flood that hits ultimately, and that needs to kind of dry up and uh, dissipate. But you also have the demand destruction because people aren't really going out. They're not, uh, you know, well, going to work. They're not doing the normal things that they would in their everyday lives. So it sort of balances things out. Oftentimes people expect these huge spikes in crude prices when we see these hurricanes or weather events, but it, it does oftentimes seem to balance out. But I no, I gotta say though that this was when when you have people that shelter in place, yeah. that's when you get more of the balance out. Okay. This was an evacuation type okay. of situation. So you're continuing to see, you know, just living down in, in the Florida panhandle, uh, I went to several places yesterday and there were so many people that were from that area that this was kind of their disaster recovery plan. So people did travel. Um, I would anticipate that you're gonna see a ripple effect going in the next few EIA reports, not this one, obviously tomorrow, but look for ne next week, look for a big drawdown there. Okay, Phil, we will. How about uh, limited reaction to the situation that's developing in Afghanistan? I keep wondering, are there longer term implications here uh, in terms of unease in the Middle East in general? Uh, for the most part, price activity seems to be ignoring some of the concerns or uncertainties. Uh, I guess this, maybe the market's seeing this kind of as a return to normalcy in terms of where we were decades ago, but ultimately, there's create some unknowns here in terms of what's going to play out here over the next decade or two in terms of uh, uh, developments there. Yeah, this is where you throw on that spread and you keep that chart going, that Brent crude okay. versus WTI. See if there's any kind of uh, geopolitical risk premium. Also, I believe that this helped underpin, you know, downside risks on gold. I think people are going to be more uh, accommodative adding that to their portfolio with those types of uncertainties. You know, it's just a, a real unfortunate situation. There is a lot of talk that there could be um, some kind of collusion with China, with with the new Taliban 
uh, government coming in and they're exploring some of those natural resources that are, that are there where China may have purchased those from, mm -hmm. you know, the U.S. or mm -hmm. or other countries, specifically like copper, lithium, things like that, that they'll start to look for all those rare earth mm -hmm. elements that could be uh, within Afghanistan. So small supply demand shifts and small where, where they're being explored at shifts. All right. Well, that will uh, also add to, well, uh, it as a focal point in terms of some of the jockeying for position that we're seeing there. I want to get your thoughts on gold tied to the weakening dollar. As of recent, it's pulled back some. But first, natural gas, while we're talking energies, uh, into multi-month highs. I'm wondering how closely this is tied to as we head into those heating season or the seasonality tied to the heating uh, uh, fall and winter months headed our way. But uh, we've seen some builds, but less than expected. And ultimately, uh, energy prices here, uh, well, have seen a reflection thereof, the nice run-up that we've seen in natural gas. It was, it was coming in, and it was real nice. Nice move on natural gas. This week, it's down about 3.4%. Now, that might be a commodity where back on the hurricane where, where you okay, say got run up hey, into. Been, yeah. it's been taken off as a result of them shutting everything down. One more commodity on the, on the hurricane. Lumber, one of the best performing commodities this week, uh, up about 3%. So, you know, sticking around that theme there, I think that, you know, natural gas, that one's going to have, you know, another week or two out. You might see all of a sudden builds now on inventories. We've got lumber here on the daily time frame. What a decline, Phil. And again, I keep joking around about how Fed Chair Jerome Powell called this one. And uh, he certainly has a. Uh, 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 you know, got ahead of some of that run-up that we'd seen in terms of commodities. Here's the bid in terms of natural gas. You can see the bid activity. I just want to point out on the weekly time frame, this shows we're back to levels we haven't seen since December of 2018. Phil, if we get up above this 492 level, let's just pull some more time onto this chart here, and, uh, and then we'll talk gold. We get above 492, $5. We're talking levels we haven't seen since uh, February of 2014. So we're going to be watching natural gas on the move up off that 144 low you mentioned gold. It has seen a little bit of a bid back above 1800. Still kind of limited. It's got some hurdles to uh, get up above here, but the weakening dollar seems to be helping provide support. What else are you seeing behind uh, the move up? So on gold, you it, it's it's two things. We we like gold coming up into the back half of the year, so we believe that investors should have some allocation of their portfolio towards gold. Um, there are certain times own gold, certain times to be you know less invested in gold. I think we're coming back up to you need to hold more gold. Now, if you miss the move on gold, you wait for the ADP report come out tomorrow and also the jobs report on Friday. Those come in better than expected. You'll see the taper talks start coming. All the hawks are going to come back out. Gold will get hit. That's your first time to get in on it. I think 1787 and 1775, somewhere in there. CME launched those micro contracts. There's no reason why you wouldn't add exposure with the 10 ounce contracts. They're so small. They got low margin. Um, you know, it's just it's just a great contract that kind of applies to a wider range of people. I think on the upside, though, if you get that breakout over, you know, 1835, I think it start could start to uh, uh, run loose. So, you know, I think call options maybe to the upside might be the way to play it. Buy the futures on the dip, have some call exposure going forward. I like a good reminder in terms of uh, the micro contract as well. We talk about those quite frequently in terms of providing that less on a per tick uh, per contract margin per contract basis and 1835 does seem to be a key area here we've got the gold chart up right now is the highs that we saw back in the middle to end of July ultimately the June highs the end of May June highs lie up around that 1900 level and the bulls want this one thing up and through the record 2100 area Phil real quick uh, at the top of the show I mentioned how uh, in the interim we have some numbers to keep an eye on but the real focal point this week being the jobs data I'm keeping a close eye on the wages number because, again, we talk about, well, I just mentioned Fed Chair Jerome Powell calling some of those commodity run-ups and how they would be somewhat transitory. We talk about some of those inflationary pressures, but wages, ultimately, if they're on the rise, everybody's talking about how that's not going to be transitory. Well, the wage rise, I think, is going to be here to stay. The transitory, as far as commodities, I think it just rotates between which commodity is the higher one. We already identified, you know, coffee. People are going to be going to Starbucks and going, holy cow, this thing keeps getting more expensive or the cup keeps getting smaller here. So, you know, there's a big rotation between that. Transitory is, I think that that's a bad term for them to use because I definitely think that the days 
of these cheaper prices are, are pretty much gone forever. Wage growth is here, but are the jobs coming back? Are people going to want to come back? You know, I mean, you read a lot of these obscure statistics where people can stay home and they get paid just as much as if they went to work and it really gets you scratching your head.